Welcome to the dungeon, everybody. Welcome to another black and white volume. This bead is going to be uh, half and half, but on the bias, and you'll see what I mean. And then we're just gonna start adding our dots like I always do. I need to get into the zone. I have to listen to the ends of the final episode in the Dark Tower series. And you all know if you've been watching my videos that that's a very important book to me in my life ever since I can remember. <laughs> I have loved my journeys with Roland and Susanna and Eddie and Oi and Jake throughout all these years that I've been listening to it. That's what I meditate to while I work. Thanks for watching. Take care, um, be safe, we'll see you next time. Where he was at the base of the pyramid. And the old star and old mother rose in the sky. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first half of this bead and like I said it's going to be on the bias so I have to figure out how I'm going to make one side of it just white but the first thing that I always do is figure out my length and roll it out do use the cool edge to help you roll out the hot edge like right here I'm going to add a little bit to the edge and I use the cool side to guide me. Now this is actually going to be put on completely different. You see I'm swiping the color on just one side. I'm going to turn it over and swipe in the opposite direction so everything is evenly thick on just half of the mandrel. Unfortunately, I didn't get myself pressing this down, but you'll see it um, here in a second. When I press it down, I let it just droop nice. You notice how I'm pressing it down here. It's the same way I did it before. Okay. And that's going to give me a nice half white on the bias. And here I'm just adding glass to the top of that. So I have the, the roundness that I'm looking for on the top half. Now for the black side. I'm gonna add just a huge wad, put it right in the middle, and then do a twist and turn all the way around until I have enough. And I do a little pull so the black reaches the mandrel and then a full reheat. Black will overtake white very quickly, so I didn't want to add too much black to the sides. And here is where I'm going to do that now with a thick black stringer. I'm just going to start from one edge of the mandrel and work my way, and I am covering up little bits of white here and there as I go. And then when I'm satisfied with how that's going to look, I'll slowly start to heat and push it down. I don't want to give this another full reheat. Not until I know I am ready to do so. A little bit of white I have to cover up there. And now here's the reheat. I'm, I'm heating up more of the black and then I'll start to get into the white again. But it's really more of the black and then just to round it out. And there we have our bead on the bias. You can stop here and do whatever you want now that you know how um, to make that. But for me, from here on out, I am just going to be adding dots on one side, and then we'll work the other side. So I want to do the, I believe I'm going to be working on the black side first. 
And how I do this, the heating is interesting. I wanna heat and graze the sides so that the black, because I know it overtakes the white more, I'm heating it so it droops down towards the white part of the glass. And that'll allow that black to kind of pull down into the white instead of just heating it in the round. And then I just start adding dots. We're gonna do this whole black side and then part two is kind of like working on the white side. And you'll see that obviously in a little bit here. I just love adding the dots. And this is fun too. Just remember how you're heating things. I want everything to go towards the black side. So I'm going to make sure that all the white is touching there. And then I slowly graze each side a little at a time. I don't want to fully melt them in. I'm going to push them down with my knife first. Just a little bit, just to help get them to where they need to be a little faster in the flame. Plus, I feel like this gives me a little bit more control over how my dots melt in the, in the flame. And I'll just do that again on the other side. Now we do the heat on the one half. Mind you, I'm always keeping the white side hot, you know, always making sure that the white never completely cools down. You don't want to just work on the black side and neglect heating the white side, or when you get to the white side, it could crack. But this is just a completely different way of heating and working the glass is on the sides. And I do, I just go to town on these, like these are my meditation beads. And every time I do these beads, it's always different. Here is where I do the full crown, because I've gotten low enough to where those dots can be put in the, uh, around, around the black. And then where I need to, I'll just add a little bit more. It's always easier to add more. And then being able to turn that mandrel around is a huge thing. So if you don't work in the middle of the mandrel, this might be a little bit more tricky for you. If you want to learn how I dip my mandrels in the middle, you'll want to go back to my very first 101 bead video, which is all about how to, or how I dip my mandrels. Now here we're getting smaller using my stringer. So you always want to have the stringers. You want everything, you always want to have everything ready. And here I am getting closer and closer to the very bottom of that black. And I'm really turning it around and heating so everything is being pulled in the same direction. That was kind of a strange heat, but I think that we are getting very close to finishing this one side. Use my knife to help me out a little bit. I think I should have put six dots down. Five, it's, it was just a weird number, but that just seemed to work at the time. Like I said, they're just meditative beads. I'm not really thinking about the perfection as much as I'm thinking about the pattern. All right. Now I am going to leave you to watch the rest of this video. 
and meditate on it a little bit while I do the white side. Now that we're finished with the black side. And I do hope you enjoy how I finish the rest of this bead off. I thought it uh, turned out really nice. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite black and white beads that I've made yet. On that note, you guys have a great one. We'll see you in the next video.